I want to talk a little bit more about that, that issue of the predictions meeting the reality on the ground, because it's not just the, the issue of publication. It's the fact that when it comes to, let's just call it longevity medicine, the time frame from getting something from the lab onto the market could massively negate some of your predictions. It may take 10 years from the discovery to turn it into a drug that's actually available on the market. My, my question is, is partly how do we solve that? And also, do you think that countries like China may beat America and the rest of the Western world to this ability to allow us to have longevity medicine it's a very, available? It's a very important question. A large part of why I take a lot of time to speak to audiences that may not necessarily be biologists or whatever, or enthusiasts, is precisely to address that, to get um, policymakers, opinion formers, you know, decision makers, better informed about the priorities here, the, what, what, what the options are and what may happen. I personally believe that the time frame for the true 100% achievement of the technologies that we're working on is around 20 years, with, of course, a wide range of speculation around that, so 50 50 chance of getting there around 20 years from now. But the time frame that people in decision-making and, and opinion-forming positions need to be thinking about is absolutely not that time frame. What they need to be thinking about is the time frame within which there is going to be a change in widespread anticipation of these technologies. Specifically, I think, and I have always said this, I think that within well under a decade, perhaps as little as five years, there is very likely to be a sufficient level of progress in the laboratory, mostly in mice, in terms of postponing aging with rejuvenation therapies, that even my more conservative colleagues who have reputations to lose will be going out there on stage and on camera and saying, well, in as many words, they'll be saying, yes, Aubrey de Grey was right all along. But what they'll actually be saying is, um, what they'll actually be saying is, yeah, you know, it's only a matter of time before we get this rejuvenation thing to actually work for humans, because we have seen enough in the lab to show that it is practical. Now, I have always said, and I maintain even more strongly now than ever, that the sequence of events thereafter, from that point onwards, will be very, very rapid. That basically, you know, the day after that kind of thing happens, the Oprah Winfrey's of this world will be out there saying, well, if it's only a matter of time, then maybe it might be a good idea to make it a little less time. And the day after that, it will become impossible to get elected unless you have a manifesto commitment to have a real war on aging, not just a war on cancer scale war on aging, but an actual, you know, ridiculous amount of investment, not only in getting these therapies developed as quickly as the science allows, but also in putting in place the infrastructure, you know, the training of medical personnel and the building of, you know, uh, whatever it's whatever is necessary, so that this therapy can be provided to everybody who's old enough to need it, pretty much as soon as it's developed. I believe that the anticipation of that anticipation, if you see what I mean, is utterly critical at this point in order to minimise the turbulence that will arise as a result of these these, these breaks.